Next we have um, Dr. Bill Gilsenin, one of our internists, and his question is, my vet diagnosed atrial fibrillation in my riding horse. Is this a problem? Thanks, Dr. Spike. So to, to answer the question, I think it makes sense to start off by briefly visiting what atrial fibrillation is. So atrial fibrillation is the most common performance enhancing, or no, enhancing, affecting, <laughs> we didn't get there yet, performance affecting arrhythmia in the horse. And uh, what it results in is a very irregular rhythm. So if you listen to your horse with a stethoscope and your horse is natural fibrillation, some people will call that a fib. What you hear is kind of what this ECG tracing looks like. So this is a horse that's in a fib, and each of these spikes indicates a heartbeat. And you'll see there's not a lot of rhyme or reason from beat to beat. And the best analogy I've ever heard is it sounds like shoes in a dryer. And, uh, and that rhythm, you need an ECG to confirm, but is atrial fibrillation. And there's, there's two big, broad causes for that. The first is that atrial fibrillation can be spontaneous. And we see that probably more commonly in racehorses, especially standard bred racehorses. And we think that that may happen due to either electrolyte depletion or to dehydration. Alternatively, um, it can occur secondary to cardiac enlargement, especially enlargement of the left atrium. So the mitral valve is the valve that separates the left atrium and the left ventricle. And if that valve degenerates over time and leaks back into the left atrium, with every heartbeat, that left atrium stretches a little bit and a little bit with time, and that wall can become thinner, and it be doesn't become as effective as it transplanting an impulse down to the ventricle. At that point, the atrium can start fibrillating, and the horse is in atrial fibrillation. So why does atrial fibrillation affect performance? So if you look at this diagram, I mean, really, this isn't to scale, but you can see the, the bulk of the cardiac muscles in the ventricles, and the ventricles really do the majority of the work of every heartbeat. And as such, the cardiac output accounts, the ventricles account for about 75 to 85% of cardiac output, and the atrium really only contributes about 15 to 25%, and we call that an atrial kick. Just a little bit of extra blood that goes into every heartbeat. So horses that are in atrial fibrillation, they may do fine at low to moderate levels of exercise. But when you need maximal cardiac output, that's what we'll see in racehorses or horses that are starting off the race pretty well and then they kind of poop out till the end. That's because instead of running at 100% like they need, they're only running about 75 or 85%. So it's not performance enhancing, but it does affect performance. So uh, if your horse is diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, if your vet hears it, um, what do you do next? If it's a riding horse, really that horse should be evaluated by a cardiologist or an internist to see what the condition of the heart is, because that might represent underlying disease. Uh, either of those vets can ultrasound the heart to look for leakage of the mitral valve or enlargement of the heart. And the reason that that's important is that treatment of atrial fibrillation might be possible, and that's through a drug called quinidine. We only really want to use quinidine if the heart is structurally normal. And the reason for that is if there's abnormalities in the heart, if there's leakage in the heart, if you treat the horse with quinidine and they get into a normal rhythm, they're probably going to go back into atrial fibrillation eventually. And that's not the safest treatment to do. So you don't want to subject the horse to it unnecessarily. Secondly, we know that the longer a horse is in atrial fibrillation, the more likely it is to go back in to atrial fibrillation if you convert it into a regular rhythm or the more difficult it's going to be to get it into a regular rhythm to begin with. All those things being said is if there's a chance of getting the horse into a normal rhythm and there's a reasonable expectation that they'll stay in a normal rhythm, treatment is the way to go and that horse may be able to regain their maximal cardiac output and go back to normal. So on the other hand, there are a lot of horses where treatment isn't recommended, and probably a lot of riding horses fall under that, uh, under that class because they're older. They may have some valve leakage. They may also be in atrial fibrillation for a while before you notice that. In those cases, um, those horses really should only be ridden by an informed adult, and they should only be in uh, low to moderate levels of exercise. We talked about why they should only be in low to moderate levels of exercise. Uh, but the reason that we re typically recommend that they only get ridden by informed adults is that these horses' natural fibrillation are at a risk of collapse. It's a pretty low risk of collapse, but that risk is still there. The reason for that is if all those abnormal impulses coming from the atrium get through to the ventricle at the right time, or if the ventricle starts beating on its own, 
that may cause a heartbeat that the horse doesn't have enough blood to get delivered that a normal heartbeat does, and that can make the horse collapse. To assess that risk, a cardiologist or an internist will sometimes recommend doing an exercising ECG. And what that is, is you put an apparatus onto the horse and that looks at what the heart rhythm is doing at the intended level of work. And if you start seeing a lot of abnormal beats, that's gonna suggest that that horse is at a fairly high risk of collapse, which could result in injury to not only the horse, but to the rider. So the answers, uh, just to revisit, if your horse is in atrial fibrillation and it's a horse that you ride, that really warrants a cardiac evaluation. Treatment might correct the problem if you get enough information. But horses that are stayed in atrial fibrillation, they can be ridden, but light to moderate work only, informed adults only, and they should be assessed for the potential for collapse. Thank you.